Peter Lydes with you. Stock Market Cycles Update for the week ending May 15th. It's being recorded Sunday, May 17th. Uh, time right now is 12.42 p.m. So it should be online within the next hour or so. First of all, we want to thank uh, a lot of you for responding to the new software. The numbers grew substantially after that first day, which I was as you could tell, probably a little disappointed with. And we want to encourage those of you now that have this software on a trial basis, and even the few that subscribed already without even taking the trial, to uh, make comments under the videos um, when you see things, and also um, give us an honest review about what you think of the software so far. Tell the other people out there that have been watching these updates for six months or more now, uh, how you feel about the software. I'm pretty confident we're going to get excellent reviews on it. Stefan did a fabulous job. Stefan Schurman, uh, he's a young German man who has lived quite a few places. When I originally met him uh, a year and a half ago, he was in Switzerland. Now, uh, now he's in Bulgaria. Anyway, Stefan did a fabulous job with the software, and I think those of you that have it in your hands now will agree. We've already gotten some very, very positive commentary on the software, so we're happy about that. Okay, let's turn to the market. This is, first of all, no matter what you see with the cycle projections, that doesn't mean you ignore everything else in the market. I, I feel very, very strongly about cycle projections, and they generally take precedence in terms of all of my analysis. But I never forget the basic tools that I grew up uh, in the stock market learning, and those are, of course, technical tools. So we're going to show you a couple of technical things to begin with here, actually three of them. And um, they tend to be, at least on the face of it, and at least so far, a negative. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is the low in February of 16 right here. This is the Christmas of 2018 low right here. And that simple trend line was decisively broken in the big decline we had in March of this year. And we have now seen what would, one would expect technically, a move back to the trend line from underneath. And look how that took place. I mean, it was virtually perfect. The end of April, April 28th, I believe, we topped right there. Now, we haven't fallen significantly below it, so you can't say that uh, that's the end of the story so far. But it stopped where it was supposed to stop if you want to maintain an overall bearish scenario. And so this is a barrier that needs to be overcome by the market in order to flip this technical reading from potentially negative to positive. That's on the Dow Jones Industrial Average daily chart. Um, let's take a look at the S&P now. Okay, we've been showing you this chart for quite a while now. This is a daily closing price chart of the S&P 500 cash index. And on this one, we took kind of an internal trend line right here going through the lows. The low of... Uh, early June of 2019, and it actually hits a couple of two, there's a, it, it virtually hits or comes close to hitting this August 23rd of 19, and the October 1st of 19, and the October 8th of 19. Now you can click on here, it'll tell you exactly where the anchors are. You can see them there, and the specific dates are June 3rd of 19, and October 8th of 19. Those are the dates of the anchors of this trend line. So then what we did was we simply constructed a parallel line below this one that went to the important low of December of 18, the Christmas low again in 2018. And look what happened. We broke that one decisively in the March decline of this year and again have rallied right back up to it. In fact, we got slightly above it on this one day on April 29th then came down a little, and then for two days stalled right at that line again. This this is potentially negative for the stock market. These are resistance levels that have to be overcome in order to reach higher prices. That's obvious. So those are the two things on the indexes that we're looking at. Let's look at something quite similar. 
or the advanced decline line. Okay, here's the AD line, daily AD line, New York Stock Exchange. This line is virtually identical in terms of concept with the S&P chart I just showed you. Here are the lows, internal trend line of lows. The dates may not, not be exactly the same, but they, they're typically and generally in the, exactly the same time areas. This is late May of 19, and let's look what the two anchors are here. So if we just click on this line, it'll tell us the two anchors are May 31st of 19 was the begin date, and the end date was December 3rd of 19. Those are these two points with the squares at them. And again, look at, see, one came down here, two came down almost here, three came down here, four, and came down here, five. So we've had five support levels on that line. When it broke, that was an important break. And it not only broke that line, but it broke this parallel line underneath. And what has it done now? Technical expectation come back from underneath and hit it. That's what we've done now. So I wanted to give you this technical background and show you that on a technical basis, the markets recovered just to the point where you would expect it to recover if this is going to be an ongoing bear market. Okay? So, but the most important things to us, as always, are the projections. So let's take a look at the projections and uh, this is what I call between a rock and a hard place. Let's, this is an interesting chart because we put two offsets on here to show you between a rock and a hard place. This is a daily chart of the S&P 500 cash index bar chart, intraday highs and lows. And I've made the bars really thick so you can see them coming into this area. Now, again, it's a noisy chart, but... I want you to kind of visualize what we're looking at. This red line and this blue line are nominal, or they're 10 week offsets, 48.4 to 55.3 trading days, 48.4, 55.3. And now they're coming down hard because they're mimicking this down move that took place February, March of this year. So they're coming down hard. The red one comes down like this. The, the 55 3 comes down like this. So, unless we get a substantial and fast decline here, these are going to, we're going to, in fact, we're almost above the red line already. Now, it's going to take a while to get above the blue because that's, you can see it's how much further out it is here and where you need to get. Within a couple of weeks, it won't be difficult to get above it. But right now, it has not gotten above both these lines. When it does, it will give a projection that will be close to mimicking this projection we already have. Where does this one come from? It comes from the 24.2 to 27.6 offset lines that were crossed right here. And that's where the projection was given that calls for 3371.56 to 3465.09 on the S&P cash. Okay, so here's where we are. If we get below these two lines and stay there for more than a day or two, and we, those two lines, you can, as again, it's messy here, but here's, here's the 24.2 line. Try and follow with my cursor. It goes like this, and then it goes generally sideways for a couple of weeks. Here's the 27.6, the blue line right here. Gets messy in here. And then it goes generally sideways, okay? We could show you in the, the web chart, but you're not going to get the effect on the web chart, even though it'll be a lot clearer. Right now, I can't put both of these offsets on the web chart. So I wanted to show you how prices have come up to these lines that are coming down hard, and they're, they've come down to these lines, which would invalidate this upside projection. So that's what I call between a rock and a hard place right here. This is very important. We start coming down here, then we're going below both of these five-week offset lines, invalidating at least temporarily this big upside projection. So that's where we stand on that. Now, do we have any clues for the very short term? Well, we can take a look at, uh, let's take a look at some 65-minute cash charts. Okay, this one's interesting. 
you can see that on Friday, we came up and hit this projection virtually exactly. And so the question becomes, once you reach a projection, whether it be an upside or a downside projection, are there any f further follow-through projections? Usually, you just look at the next longer offset. Let's do that now. So we just met a projection right here, but as we're meeting this projection, the past few bars have given a relatively significantly higher projection, up to 2,900 and a little bit higher. So yes, we do have a f further projection to the upside. <clears throat> Whenever you get a projection, you also want to know what it would take to invalidate that projection. And that's, of course, this line right here that gave the new projection. So if you start coming down uh, Monday, getting below, this is quite a bit down now because we we closed at 28.63 and change on Monday. Then you need to get down to the, this 28, oh, 20, 25 level in order to invalidate this upside projection. But this is very much in effect going into Monday, and it's calling for 2,900 or higher, and that might in turn lead to higher projections. So if these projections are met and give even higher ones, then the rock and the hard place chart we just showed you is going to probably see a breakthrough. Those 10-week offsets, the 48.4 and the 55.3, to give us projections back to the old-time highs in that general territory. That's where we stand as of the end of this past trading week. So we're in, I think, obviously critical territory, the rock and the hard place. And you know what to be looking for. If you had the cycle projection software, you'd know exactly what to be looking for and you could follow these short-term projections too. So again, those of you that are interested, underneath the video again today, we're going to put a link for TradeStation where you can get a special offer for those of you that are that are becoming TradeStation members just to get this program. And remember, there are no platform fees for TradeStation. Basically, the only money you will be paying if you end up subscribing to our, our application would be for the application, which is only $49 a month. You get the platform free. You get a lot of the data free. So it's a great deal. Go to the link underneath the video today and take advantage of it. If you haven't subscribed yet, bottom right, subscribe. Once you subscribe, click on the bell. You will be notified of all the updates we do as soon as we do them. And remember, we do sometimes intraday updates before the market close. That's it for now. Have the great remainder of the weekend if you're watching this on the weekend. And we'll talk to you Monday afternoon, evening.